Hi, I'm Danny Gregory, and welcome to the latest chapter or latest lesson in how to draw. Uh, this is a series that I've made of, of tutorials to help you to get to a point where you can draw absolutely anything that you want to with confidence and fun. So uh, today we're going to be focusing on one of the kind of crucial skills that will help you to develop uh, control over your drawings. And it is a bizarre sounding skill, which is blind contour. What is blind contour? Blind? How do, blind, how do you draw blind? Why would you want to draw blind? We're going to get into all that, but I can tell you that this is a lesson that a lot of people afterwards, they say, that blew my mind. That completely changed everything. It helped me so much to see like an artist. And that's really what we want to get you to do is to be able to really change the way that you perceive the things that you're drawing. That's one of the most important things that you can do when you're trying to learn. It's not about some kind of magic. It's not about some kind of formula or necessarily even steps. It's really about a sort of the sensitivity that you're going to have about how you see. It's also about changing really the relationship between your eyes, your brain, and your hand. Those are the three crucial components in putting a line on paper and making a drawing. And blind contour is going to be a way of developing uh, the skill in a fantastic new way. I, I can't wait for you to do this. It's so exciting to do this for the first time. Just wait and see. So this is one of those exercises that sounds kind of complicated, sounds sort of mind boggling, but it's actually really pretty easy to do, to do a drawing without ever looking at the paper, to look entirely at the thing that you're drawing and just trust in your hand to do its job in taking direction from your brain as your eyes focus 100% on what you're drawing. Now, here's the thing about drawing is a lot of times if you watch somebody who is new to drawing, they will spend probably 80% of their time looking at their drawing. And they'll kind of glance up at, the, at their subject and they'll look back on the drawing and they'll spend a lot of time there. What we want to do actually is to flip it. You want to spend 20% of your time looking at your drawing and 80% of the time looking at your subject and absorbing information and allowing your brain to have as much data as possible so that it can tell your hand what's important and what to do. So the important thing isn't, is my drawing right? The important thing is, do I see really clearly what it is that I'm drawing? Am I really getting the details? Am I understanding the nuance? And then trusting my brain and my hand to translate all that data into something that works well on paper. It's, it's a fascinating process, and it's also fun, and it's a little challenging, but I think you're really going to enjoy doing it. Um, no matter whether you've drawn before or not, it's nothing to do with, those, with your experience or how many classes you've taken, how many books you've read. It's really about a fundamental thing that we have built into us. If you think about it, there's so many times where you are walking down the street and your feet know what to do. You're not constantly looking at your feet as they're walking. You'd probably trip and fall if you did. You're looking ahead, and somehow your body is all kind of working together, right? It's, it's true of if you're driving a car. You don't spend all your time looking at the steering wheel, hopefully. You're looking at the road ahead, and this is the same thing here. Looking in order to turn that into a movement. It makes sense when you think about it that way. It's just different when we're new to it because we're thinking, uh, I've got to pay attention to the thing that's new and different, which is my hand moving. All right, let's get to work. So here's the thing, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need uh, a pen or a pencil, if you prefer, and a piece of paper. That's really the only tool. It doesn't matter what kind of pen, pencil. Make If it's a pen, make sure it's got ink in it. If it's a pencil, make sure that it's reasonably sharp. That's about all the preparation that you need to do. And then you need to pick out a subject. What are you going to use to look at to do this? And again, it doesn't really matter what it is. It could just be something. It should be something that's kind of in front of you. It could be a chair. It could be... Um, piece of fruit, a bowl of fruit, let's say. You want to have to be something a little bit complex, but not too complicated. Um, but uh, 
you know, it could be a stack of books. It could be, I don't know, whatever it is you want to be. We're not trying to make great art now. We're trying to do an exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try uh, doing this blind contour of, um, of a plant, right? I have this plant here. Um, let me just show you what it looks like. There it is. It's sitting in the corner. It's just a pretty simple little rubber tree. And then I'm going to put my, take my pen, where's my, here's my pen, and take my pen. I'm going to put it on the paper in front of me. Think of it as a, um, as like a journey where you're traveling, maybe you're driving or you're walking on, um, almost like on a map. You're walking, following along on this map and you get to a corner and you decide whether to turn left or right. You decide how far to turn. That's really what you're going to do. You're going to be thinking and looking and you're going to let your eyes trace along the edges. So I might tra travel up the side of one part of this plant, then across a leaf, and then up and down and up and back. So I'm going to do it for a couple minutes, and then you're going to have a chance to do this later on too. But just watch me do it, and I'll try and explain what I'm thinking about as I'm doing it so that we can uh, kind of all be in the same place. Okay, so here's my paper. I'm just t testing my pen. I did this a second ago, and I didn't have any ink in my pen, so that's important. I want to have some ink. Um, and I I taped it down. You don't need to do that. I just taped it down so it doesn't shift around on the camera. But let me actually change it so that you can see. But again, I'm not going to be looking at that. I'm going to be just looking at the plant over there. And, uh, you know, that's that little photo will just show you what it is I'm looking at. But um, so let me just start again. And I am because I'm right handed, I like to start on the upper left side. And I'm just traveling down this one leaf. Um, and I am slowly drawing and I hit the next leaf so you see this kind of smaller leaf that's in the corner upper left hand corner well I'm now going to travel turning right I'm traveling down this side of this leaf and then I'm going to go up the big leaf I'm traveling up and around the side of it and I want to keep going uh, hopefully I'm not going off the paper but um, and then I get to the very top and then I'm going to swoop around and I'm going to come down and I'm going to try and swing back to kind of where that leaf was. I hope I'm there. I don't really know. So now I'm going to come down the side of the stem here. I get to this little kind of um, almost like a knot that came that was cut off here. I come down again. I'm getting to this little segment here that will take me across to this other leaf. So I think I'm going to go up that leaf and I'm going to travel around. And then I'm going to swoop back down around the bottom of this leaf. And I get to where it intersects. And I'm kind of coming back to what I hope is the intersection with this leaf. I don't know. I'm a little bit lost on the paper, but it's okay. Now I'm going to go down the middle of this leaf, I think. And then I'm going to come back down around its bottom. So I'm drawing a line that I may have drawn before. I can't even remember anymore. But I'm just, all I'm concentrating on is just looking at the edge of this leaf. That's the contour, right? We've talked about that before. The edge, contour just means sort of edge or outline in French. Um, so I'm drawing just the edges of every little part that I see. I'm hoping that I'm back by that stem. I don't know. You're probably laughing at me because I'm doing all kinds of weird completely wrong things but it, but my point isn't to do, finish the drawing my point really is to have my eyes do this little tour of the very edge of now this bottom leaf i'm coming back down around Ooh, there's a little kind of almost like an oval there there's a little hook i'm coming back down around so as my eyes travel my hand kind of knows to travel the same path at least i hope it does now i'm going up that stem i'm going down uh, across the bottom of the stem that connects to the leaf. And now I'm on the bottom of this leaf. I'm coming back around and around and around. And I'm doing the little hook at the end. I'm coming back up the, around, down the top of this lower leaf on the right-hand side, coming back down to the stem and connecting back to the main stem. And um, let me see, I, did I do this bottom one? I don't even know. I'm just gonna, yes, I did do it because it has that little hook and a little circle, but I'm going to draw it again. You can see that's the thing you can do is what I'm really doing is I'm recording the journey of my eyes more than I'm trying to do a finished drawing. I'm drawing, it's kind of like 
like one of those sort of like lie detector tests when the little needle moves by itself. You know, it's like that. So I'm just now go zooming back up to the top and I'm doing this other leaf and I'm drawing the little hook part. I'm just going to do what I know is a second lap around this plant. Now I'm drawing the big one. See, I'm kind of drawing a bit faster now. I'm just more, a bit more confident coming back down the side of the stem. And then I get to this leaf again. I'm drawing it for what might be the third time. I don't really know. Uh, I'm drawing around it. I'm coming back to the stem, coming down the main trunk here, drawing that little edge of the leaf. And now I'm going to come down all the way to the bottom, and I'm done. Wow. OK, now I'm looking back at that drawing. and. Yeah, it's a little crazy, but it's also sort of recognizable. Like I can sort of see where I was going. I can certainly see the connection between like this looks like that leaf, right? And this looks like that's that um, that kind of leaf in the middle there. Um, and then this, this leaf onto the side. So even though it's not a great finished drawing, it is a good record of um, what I really want to accomplish, which was to be able to trace the movement of my eyes, to trace them and to see how they're going. And you might say to yourself, again, what's the point of this? I'm going to end up with some weird, janky drawing. But you're not. You're, what you're doing is when, then when you, what happens is when you start to actually draw and you want to not do it blind, but you want to look back at the page, what you do is as you're drawing this line, you draw a little part of it, and then you look back up at the plant. And you say, okay, and now I know see that that goes straight down. So I'm going to go a little bit straight. Now I stop again, and I look at it again. And I go, okay, now here it starts to curve around. I start to do that curve. You see, so what I'm doing is I'm blind part of the time. Perhaps I don't want to move my pen when I'm blind. And then I look down again, and I'm drawing that line. I look again. So I'm blind to the page. But I want to be blind to the page more than I want to be blind to the subject. So um, it is a really great way of slowing yourself down and checking your work as you go, which is really important. Because if you can draw really carefully and slowly every single line on this plant, you will have drawn the whole plant, right? If you get each part right, the whole will be right too. So that's what we're trying to train ourselves is how do we get each of the parts right and how do we focus and slow down enough to be able to do that. Like a lot of drawing exercises that we're going to be doing, this might strike you as odd and unfamiliar, and that's precisely what it is because we are, again, training ourselves to see differently than we normally do in our day-to-day -day lives because, again, when we talk when you talk about how your brain perceives things, a lot of times your brain just wants to process it, identify it, and move on. So it looks at the plant and it says, A, plant, got it, check, plant. Or it might say, rubber tree, I think. And so it identifies that. But then if you said to it, okay, don't look at it, how many leaves does it have? You wouldn't really know. But after you've done this drawing, you know there are five leaves on it. And you know what the comparative size of each leaf is. And you know what angle they are to the stem. And you know all these different variables, all these different elements that go into making it, only because you slowed down and stared at it and studied it and practiced this process of training yourself. So that's, that's a really, as you can see, I can imagine this is a crucial way of getting to that skill. So then when you look at it again, when, you, when you're not doing a blind contour drawing anymore, but you want to do an actual drawing of it, again, you have... You, it isn't so unfamiliar to be able to look in that way and to say, okay, I'm truly seeing this plant rather than just trying to jump to a conclusion. All right, so it's your turn. What I want you to do is, again, pick an object. You could take your shoe off and throw it on the table. You could take a chair. Just try and do something that is far away enough or far off to the side enough that you're not seeing your paper. Like you could actually move your paper all the way to this side, draw over here. You know, here's your drawing. Let me see if you can see it. Here's my drawing over here, and here's the thing I'm looking at over there, and I just can't see it at all. You can go to that extent if you want, but just in general, try to keep your attention on your subject rather than on your paper. Okay. Remember, try and be 
creative and open as you're doing this, right? The fact is you're going to end up with a drawing that's kind of funky, kind of unlike anything you've ever done before. And that's pretty cool. That's kind of artistic. So allow yourself that latitude. And here's the funny thing is also, if that part of your brain that says, eh, you can't draw, uh, everything you're doing sucks, you just say, well, what do you expect? I wasn't even looking at it. I did this blind. It's a good excuse. But also, giving that yourself that excuse, try to avoid doing kind of scritchy, scratchy back and forth lines. Try and really trace as if you were driving down this road and you're really following it very clearly and very very specifically, as opposed to kind of jerking your steering wheel back and forth across the road. Just drive smoothly. Even if it's slightly off, it doesn't matter. It will look better if it seems to be confident. That's something I'm going to re-emphasize re to you time and again. The quality of your line says a surprising amount about the feeling that people get from looking at a drawing. Different lines have different feelings, and we're going to get into that. What is a sh what does a nervous line look like? What was a lazy line look like? What was a faint line look like? What was a bold line look like? They all have different personalities and fit different characters. So this is an opportunity to just say, I'm going to just draw a confident line, Co looking confidently, and I have the excuse that I'm drawing something without looking at it. So who cares if it's not that great? All right. So when you're done watching this video, I want you to pop out your paper, get your subject pull out your pen and try doing a blind contour drawing. Try doing several. It's fun, it's interesting, and you'll see how it changes as you do it. Next time, we're gonna to get together and we're gonna do something really nuts, which is we're gonna literally draw with our eyes closed. And we're gonna draw a self-portrait with our eyes closed. I know it sounds absolutely mad, but it's gonna be really cool because you're gonna to start to see how your brain and your hand already have a lot of connections connecting them. There's a powerful neural highway and that, and a lot of it is your hands know what to do. And you'll see when we do our exercise next time, um, how in incredible that is and how when you train it, you will get it to be more and more um, accomplished at this. All right. So don't forget, don't just watch videos, do some drawing and make sure that you subscribe to these tutorials so that you'll know when new ones come out because I'm going to be doing quite a large number of them over time to teach you more and more stuff and have fun. This is, this is a fun process and the more you allow it to be fun, the more likely you are to keep doing it. And the more you keep doing it, the more you're going to get the results that you want. So don't beat yourself up, particularly when you're not even looking at the paper excuse in the world. Thanks a lot. I'll see you again next time.